Hello everyone, Attack Power here with another tribute to Normandy for me, 44 Steel Division 2 preview here with 7th Armored Desert Rat. If you guys enjoy this, hit that like button, subscribe, and consider checking out the Patreon. Link down below. Thank you to all who have or currently support there, and check out attackpowergaming.com. Alright, so thank you to the Strike Team for sending me this. Remember, everything here is still um, up for alteration and such they have not dropped the actual release date yet but things are still subject to change but it's very exciting that we're getting these previews now which means it cannot be too far away Woo! now seventh desert so let's check out the uh tabs here recon tab quite large you get seven slots here five of them are pretty cheap and then you have a three four point slot at the end there infantry tab only seven slots which these days is actually on the small side um and it's pretty expensive it gets up to three four points still and you only have two one point slots with the rest being two the tank tab here of course quite large we have nine slots five of them being one pointers two more twos and two threes so you're gonna have plenty of armor here no question about that support tab six slots pretty average the costs not terrible not great you only have two one point slots a lot of twos and a single three the anti-tank tab here uh pretty standard as well six slots three of them one pointer so not bad there a tab looks plenty uh you get five slots you don't you certainly don't need that many anyway uh two one point slots and a two point slot is probably all you really need already tab pretty big seven slots here with a lot of two one and two points so you get all the way up to five slots pretty cheap the last two are pretty expensive i doubt you ever use them Air tab, five slots, which is not huge, but is plenty for what you need. You have plenty of cheap slots here. You probably bring about four planes at maximum anyway. So let's dive into this here. All right, so the Reki, they have higher veterancy right off the bat, um, but they have this battle. So, okay, so that's what this one was. So this division has battle weary. So all the a lot of the units here, I don't know if it's all or a lot of, but a fair chunk of the units in this division have higher veterancy curves, so they get the better availability, which is is sweet but they come with this new battle weary trait which means they build up suppression a little bit faster it's not as bad as disheartened they also don't automatically retreat so like disheartened when they get pinned down they automatically retreat these guys do not do that but they do take increased suppression damage so it's something to be aware of it's not as bad as disheartened but it is still a factor it's still something to be aware of on these units the question is is it worth the extra veterancy I'm going to guess yes. I'm going to guess yes if I'm going to blind guess this. I'm going to say yes, it probably is. All right, so we have the Daimler. Oh, wait, he skipped the Daimler. Went right to the Scouts Piat. No, wait, this is the normal Scouts. Excuse me. Okay, so the normal Scouts really good, actually. You get a sniper rifle. You have a Vickers gun on there as well. So that's a machine gun. You get a machine gun sniper combo here? And five of them in A at one veterancy? Whoa, this unit is fantastic. Yeah, that unit is very good. Transports didn't look like anything special, but 20 points for this? Dang, okay. I mean, that's a unit. That's solid. I mean, is that breaking the world open? No, but it's good. Getting the Dammler, but it's B phase lock. Not great. Um, ah, you probably don't use this in B phase. They're very easy to kill at that point. Um, and their penetration really is not great. Really fast round speed rate of fire, though. Regular Scout Piot. Nothing special here. Again, higher availability curve, but Dandler, Little John, these are great. You almost definitely take these despite them not coming till B phase. Uh, they have radio on them, which makes them even better. You get two cards of these. 130 millimeters of penetration is great. Four damage is not because it takes three takes three penetrations to get it. It's kind of weird. I, I don't. I never noticed it said very late for the QF two pounder. That's kind of interesting. I've never seen it. I just like never noticed it said that. Um, but yeah, this, this unit can trade up pretty darn well, especially you kind of two with these, you do two at a time. Um, and then you can kind of trade up to one tank. So even if you lose one of these in the trade up, right, you're, you're still spending 30 points to kill what is a supposedly probably an 80 point vehicle. So it's a, it's a positive trade almost every time. And you get six of these with one vet, which is really good. We have the Staghound. This comes in A, so it gives you your explosive Commonwealth start that many people are accustomed to. Neat camo on here. That's kind of cool with the like splotches on there. Um, st Staghounds are okay. They're not amazing, but their speed it definitely makes them very usable, and they do have very high optics. I mean, they're high for a vehicle. Stuart, six K R I H Cree Cree. I don't know. It's battle weary though, which means it has it doesn't have higher veterancy. Weird. Huh. I thought the whole point of the battle weary thing was that your units then get higher veterancy. 
Huh. Okay. I feel like this already breaks the trend of what it was supposed to be going for. Uh, love these things. The 75 mil auto cars, these are phenomenal. Uh, they have It has a good damage on his HE. The AP shell has 90 millimeters of penetration. The only problem is this is not heat. Feels like it should be heat shells, but it's not. Um, it does come with radio as well, so this is a very good unit. Almost definitely take, despite the fact it's B phase locked. And then you get a new unit, Cromwell 4 KRIH. Cri. We're just calling it a Cri. Um, it's a Cromo. Comes in A phase. Radio. That's really good. I don't know if this unit's act. No, this unit's definitely new. Interesting. I mean, you almost definitely take this. I don't, I don't see why you wouldn't. It seems like a very good unit. Especially, I mean, you have radio slapped on a lot of stuff here. So Artie should be humming. Like, Artie, your Artie should be humming in this deck. All right, infantry. Let's see here. So defense group, we see the effects of the increased veterancy right off the bat here. Double vet defense group. I don't know. Are the Remember, I forgot to mention too, if you didn't see the other Commonwealth video, Brens are buffed up to 15% accuracy, which is a pretty big buff. Now, does that make them phenomenal? I'm not sure yet because their suppression is no higher. Um, you know, they haven't gotten a rate of fire increase or anything, just higher accuracy. And it's always hard to tell in this game how big of an effect that will have over the long term. Like, I, I don't know how much more accurate that really makes these things. Is it going to be like crazy, like their laser beams all of a sudden? Or is it just like a, a very slight increase? I personally hope it's a slight increase that just puts them in line with all the other LMGs. Because last thing the Commonwealth need is phenomenal infantry because they have very good other stuff. Uh, field engineers. That does not look like higher availability, actually. No, because field engineers aren't, isn't it normally 918? And now instead it's 510, 15? So that isn't, that isn't better. That's not higher veterancy for the same availability. Weird. I'm just trying to understand some of these inconsistencies. I'm trying to figure out if they are mistakes or if they're purposely supposed to be like that. Uh, this is nice though, getting a 20 point leader at double vet. Three of those, that's pretty good. Now, there's no radio on it, but let's be real. The recon tab is all radio, so you could probably get away with not having radio on your leader in this deck. Motorized rifles. Okay, this has increased veterancy. Like, this is correct. Um, Usually, you would start with eight, so th this is correct where you get higher uh, availability. These units are not incredible, but they, are, they do have Thompsons instead of Stens, which is definitely a pretty good upgrade in terms of CQC firepower. Um, that doesn't make this unit a good CQC unit, but it, it is an upgrade. Like, but uh, this is one of those weird. It's not truly a hybrid unit, but it kind of is, because your your weapons are split between essentially. Now, the Bren is an automatic rifle, which means it serves both purposes. Again, I just don't know how good this buff really made them. Comes with half tracks. That is important to note. Fifty cal specifically. All right, so here's buffed up rifles. So I mean, you can truly spam these rifles out with veterancy really well. We'll have to see. We'll just have to... Now, the loadout's different too, though, right? Because I don't think you usually get three stens. Do you? I didn't think so. I thought there was less stens than that. Maybe you do, though. Maybe I'm just wrong. Wait, is that troop number correct? No, that's not correct. There's 11 guns there. There's 11 guns and only 10 guys. That makes sense when it's a bazooka or something, but not when it's a LMG. What is going on? Wait, let's back up here. Let's count. One, yeah, seven, eight. Eight men. Eleven. Okay, this is just straight wrong. <laughs> um, I'm going to assume it's going to get fixed. Otherwise, one of these guys have, like, got the double. He's got the stand in the brand. <laughs> like, going to town. <laughs> like, like I, don't, I don't understand how this works otherwise. So, maybe better rifles? I don't really know. Kind of weird. They do have the battle weary trait, th trait though as well. Don't forget. All right, motor rifles here. You get three of them with radio. So if you prefer, so I mean, this is five points more. Basically, you're just paying a five point premium on this to have radio. Essentially, is the difference. Rifles leader with the Piat. Oh no, you take this one. You want the Piat. I mean, the Piat's not great, but just having the Piat there is really important. Because if your opponent tries to run you down with, with vehicles, you, you need it. Like, it has to be there. This also comes with radio. It's got the same availability. Five points is 100% worth having a Piat and radio. Despite the fact you don't really need radio with all the other radio. All right, Rifles Piat here. This is nice. I mean, having these guys at one vet automatically is great. You get two cards of them. So, 
This gives you something to work with. I'm, again, just going to assume the Bren buff is makes these pretty viable now. I, I highly doubt they're beating Panzergrens or anything like that. Uh, but maybe they match up against Strelke DP now. Maybe now. So now we have Assault Engineers. This is a new unit, I think. I'm assuming it is. Uh, nine rifles, two Brens, a flamethrower, and a Piot. I mean, that's fantastic. Six availability in A, 12 in B, and whatever in 18 and C. And you get two cards of these? Wow. No wonder they didn't give you the little assault engineers. Okay. Yeah, these guys are very good. I mean, you absolutely take these. They are not, but again, this they're doing it again. Eugen, Eugen's doing this clever thing where they're like, here what is here is technically a CQC infantry, but everything about it actually is not CQC at all. Right? The only thing CQC here is the flamethrower. Outside of that, it's rifles and brens. And while brens are automatic rifles. They're still not CQC. Like, that's not really what they're designed for. So it got it has shock, which again is like, oh, okay, this is CQC infantry. But everything about this does not actually put out that much damage. So, like, yes, this will beat any rifle unit in the woods, but it will lose against most dedicated full strength CQC units. Like, this should beat a Sturm Pioneer. No doubt about that. This beats the Sturm Pioneer. But this loses very heartily to two Sturm Pioneers, I would postulate pretty definitely. It just does not put out enough damage with rifles to match up with the damage that some machine guns put out. So while this unit is great and I would definitely take it, almost look at it as more of a rifle unit that happens to have a flamethrower that you can throw in the woods if you need to. I, I feel like that's more what this is. I could be totally wrong. I mean, maybe the thing slaps in the woods, but at least on paper, it shouldn't. Like, it really shouldn't. Again, unless Brens are really good now. Unless Brens really are good. And now we have the Desert Rifle Unit. So this is the new infantry squad. It's open to everything. It's 8, 16, 24 availability, it looks like. We have two Thompsons, five rifles, three Brens, and a Gammon Bomb for 30 points. Hmm. The irony here is this has the same cost as a Kangaroo Rifle, and a Kangaroo Rifle is twice the size and also has three Brens and a lot more everything else. And a Piat. So this unit is good. You definitely take it. But it's definitely not the best unit out there. Um, and again, it really comes down to how much does this Bren buff change things. If Brens are good, a triple Bren is fantastic, obviously. Like, if a Bren is a good machine gun now, then three Brens is really good. If Brens are still very meh, then this unit is kind of meh, honestly. Like, it, it, that's what it is. It, it's it's kind of meh. If it, It's kind of mid if... if Brens are still mid, or below mid, I should say. If Brens are mid, this is probably an okay unit. Having three LMGs on a unit is good. Like, think, um, not kangaroo rifles, think um, the Bazatsung, the, the boot Bazat, Bazatsung out of Toulon, the triple MG-34. MG-34 is a solid machine gun, LMG. Having three of them is very good, right? It, it's not overwhelmingly, crazily, crushingly good, but it is very good. Um, note it's not three MG 42s. That would be crazy good. Uh, but yeah, so we'll have to see what we really will have to see, but I think you take this unit. I, I, you definitely don't leave it at home, but you don't, at the same time, you don't have that much, have many infantry slots. Like you are going to be struggling to fit all these expensive infantry in. You probably take both rifles, Piat. You probably, you probably take both assault engineer units. You probably take the field engineers, despite them having weirdly low availability. Um, so that's five already. We have no leader yet, so leader, and you're already only got one slot left. I didn't. Did I even say the desert rats in there? I don't think I did. Said two, two field engineer leader. No, I didn't. So the desert rat, like the desert rats, are a four point slot if you're taking those guys. I mean, maybe you take them over the rifles, Piot. I guess is what you do. Yeah. Okay. You just take them over the rifles, Piot. But I don't know, there's a lot of infantry here, but you don't actually fit very much in here. Very interesting. Very interesting. Hmm. All right, Stuart. Uh, I don't think there's any increased availability here. Also, this Stuart only has two Brownings, not three. Something to be aware of. There's one less Browning on this Stuart. Abbot of Chantry. Chantry, excuse me. Is this an ace? It doesn't look like it. It's just a really cheap Cromwell that has really low armor. 
85 kilometers an hour. Just noticing that. So you get one of these. <laughs> I don't see how you'd ever take this. Like what? What purpose does this unit serve? <laughs> like I'm trying to figure out why. I'm trying to figure out where you would use this unit exactly. I mean, it dies to everything. You the big issue. The big, I mean, this would be good if there were three on a card. I, I would almost say a, a definite take with three on a card. But with one singular unit, I, I have a hard time. I have a hard time endorsing taking this unit. It's just so ca card inefficient. Like, it's so horribly card inefficient. Interesting. Very interesting. Cromwell 5, it's a Cromwell 5. I mean, they're very cost efficient. They're zippy. They do the Cromwell thing. We've seen Cromwells be good in the past. Stan should be getting very excited here, of course. All of our Commonwealth lovers, Yaman as well. I mean, that just tickle their fancy for sure. You can get a lot of Cromwells here, like a disgusting amount. Now, oh, we do see Cromwell 7s too here in a bit. It's cool. It's cool. I am a camo on there too. Leader Cromwell, nothing spectacular here. Notice these do not have increased value. Okay, so Cromwell 7, the good Cromwell with 120 millimeters of armor, you do not get until C phase. That sucks. Like that's cool camo. I will mention that. That's a kick in the balls there. Like that is not exciting. Like that's really not all that exciting at all. Hmm. 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 Yeah. Um. Yeah. You get two cards, which is nice. I mean, once you hit C phase, this is all you bring, probably. I mean, it's a cool looking. I mean, they got it really decked out nice. I will give it that. And then we have Fireflies. Every phase, okay. So Firefly, 5C, you have 3, 2, 1 availability in A phase. So you probably have 6, 9 unvetted in B and C. I mean, this is a nice, you get four cards of these. You could, Yeah, you have them in every phase. So that's really good. I mean, it's a good tank tab. I mean, Cromwells and Fireflies is good combo. Like, you don't get any Shermans, which is kind of a bummer. So you don't have, like, that absolute monster power at close range for killing soft targets. But you have Infinity Cromwells, and you have if you want, essentially infinity fireflies. So that is good. That is definitely good. And whoa, look at this support tab. I can feel this is going to feel really gross in certain situations. Wasp is meh. Can you bring it? I would love to know if you have a wasp transport. Uh, Cromwell 6. That's a lot of Cromwell 6. It's three cards of these. So basically infinite 2K HE. So you have infinite 2K HE AT in the fireflies and you have infinite 2K HE in the Cromwells. Six is here. So that's really good. And then you have commander stuff. So basically here you take a Vickers and you take all three cards of your Cromwells. And, or no, you probably take two. Like realistically you take two and then you take the commander, I guess. But do you even need the commander? Yeah, you probably still need the commander. Because you're probably bringing one vet on all your infantry because you don't have the availability. You don't have the slots to have more than that. So you don't, you probably don't double vet them. And you'd love to get them up to triple vet with the commander. So you probably do bring commanders. You probably just have nine. I mean, nine Cromwell sixes is plenty anyway. <laughs> you don't need more than that. In a 1v1 game, of course, we're talking. Interesting. Interesting, interesting. All right, so Piot, I, you don't need it. Your infantry are all carrying Piots. Six pounders, standard six pounder, nothing special. There's no veterancy increase on these, no battle weary. Then you have the Wolverines, which are just M10s. And M10s are great. There's nothing to complain about an M10. They M10s did get a price nerf, by the way, to 65 points. Pretty sure that's a price nerf. Wolverines are the same price. Or maybe, no, maybe they didn't. Maybe it's Panzer 4 js that went down to 65 points. Maybe that's what I'm thinking. Apologies. I mean, you got four sets of 17 pounders. Do you really need that? You, I mean, you probably take at least one, maybe two at most. Hmm. Because you have the Fireflies. You got. In, I mean, you definitely want some 17 pounders. I wouldn't take Achilles. What do you need these for? Like, you get worse availability, and, I mean, it's it's 15 points less than a Firefly, but these things die to a, they die to, like, a stiff gust of wind. Like, I don't know. I don't think you take these. I really don't. You, it's much better to upvet your Fireflies. Much, much better. Like, not even close. Staghound AA. Um, these are great, actually, for supporting your infantry with the double 50 cal. They almost instantly pin anything, uh, but for AA, they're terrible. Like these are for ground support only. Crusader AA, these are phenomenal. You get three cards of these. Uh, yeah, I mean that's definitely great. Really good at supporting your ground pushes. Bofors 40 mil, these are really good. They're just a regular Bofors basically on wheels. 
No armor, something to be aware of. But yeah, that's really good. This AA tab is great. I mean, there's nothing more you could really want. Try Polston, Crusader AA, Mark II B. Oh, these are fine. Your other options are, I, I don't know. Is this better? Probably. Usually these things, the, the multi 20 mils are generally better when they're like in a flak verling or in this tri Polston form. Um, but you have lower availability. The Bofors comes in with veterancy and you get two and A phase at vet one. So, and the Crusader AA Mark II, the normal one is much better at supporting your ground troops. So I, yeah, I probably don't take this, honestly. You probably take the Bofors and you probably take the Crusader AA. All right, already tab here. Nothing spectacular. 81 Mortar looks... No, it has higher availability. So this has higher availability. I'm not understanding where this veterancy stuff is being applied. It feels so... It doesn't feel consistent. Like, some things have it, some don't. Sometimes it's soft, sometimes it's not. Some already gets it, some already doesn't. Are mortars considered infantry? Is that why the mortars all get this bonus and the already doesn't? But in the American division, the, it did. Like, Big Red 1 did get already with bonus. I'm very confused. I am greatly confused. Oh, wow. A lot of different transports there. That's fun. Saxton comes in A phase. Infinite ammo here at 90 shells. Kind of nuts. You get the M12 GMC 155. Uh, the problem with this, of course, is you have, like, no ammo. Like, it is 10 rounds. It's nuts. You absolutely need to bring ammo for this thing because it doesn't fire at all. And it's also phase lock to A and B phase. That really sucks. And then you have the 140 mil off map. I actually find this off map to be pretty underwhelming. Uh, not a big fan of it, although it does come with a tank. Like, this is a legitimate Cromwell outside of the fact it's an RD observer and has radio. So you're actually only paying, what, 60 points? No, 70, 80 points. You're paying 80 points for this off map because the Cromwell's a Cromwell, like a 50 points for a Cromwell. So you're, you're technically, technically this is a great deal, in terms of like an off map, because you're getting a, a legitimate tank along with the off map. So we have the Spitfire Air Recon, no armament on this, so that's a bummer. It's a, a fine recon otherwise, but it's not shooting anything down. It's not a C fire. We have the Mitchell 2 Bobber. Okay, bomb loadout. It's not great. Any sort of AA will probably spread these bombs too much to be effective. And the availability curve is 124, which is not great. They have the Mitchell 2 with a... That looks the same. Is that just me or is that the same? Oh, it's lower. What? Why are they the same price if it's just four less bombs? Oh, it's just availability? That's it. Because this is 2-4. Okay, so literally the only difference is availability. So basically you're taking more bombers and each one has less bombs... Or you get less bombers and it has more bombs. I don't know which way I'd go on that. Probably this one, actually. Probably that one. Spitfire is a Spitfire. This is their new Belgian one. So they got Belgian voice actors for this and stuff, which is neat. That's definitely neat. In-game has no effect, essentially. But you take the Tempest anyway. I mean, you're paying a 25-point premium, but the Tempest is so much better. It's kind of insane. But then you have the Tempest with other stuff. Like, do you even take the Tempest fighter? Like, what's the point? Like, again, like this Tempest with the 213 kilogram bombs, this will kill almost anything that it bombs without AA interfering. You get three of them in A phase. 145 points is extremely expensive. Don't get me wrong. But this is your fighter, too. Like, you don't call in fighters if you call this in. It's still going 645 kilometers an hour and has medium resilience. I mean, these are, these are phenomenal planes. There's a reason they're 145 points. Um, the rocket variant has lower availability and costs more, and that's the issue, and it's a little slower, so you probably don't take this, although the booms it gets is much bigger. Like, don't get me wrong, it's definitely putting out more boomies. And then this is the heavier bomber variant. This has much lower availability at only 124. So you probably, you probably just take the Tempest bomber, light bomber, you maybe take a card of Mitchell's, and then you probably just take the Spitfire Recon, honestly? I would think that's actually all you take here. I mean, if you really want more fighters, I guess you could take the normal Tempest, but I don't see why you would. Like, I really don't. It's, like, almost unnecessarily fast. Unless you're playing and you know you're playing against a really air-spammy deck, I don't think I'd ever... I don't think you need to bring the fighters in this deck. 
So yeah, this is a very interesting division. I, I'm not sure how to feel about it. The recon tab is technically really good, but it's got a lot of phase locking that you have to be aware of. Uh, it's got no special infantry or anything. It's just a lot of armored stuff. Again, a lot of it phase locked. Then infantry tab is good. I, I'm really, I'm not 100% trying to put my finger on this one. I think it's good, but it is limited. Like you don't actually get a ton of infantry. You have to be very aware of this. Um, the tank tab is, is really solid. This is, a, this is a good tank tab. No doubt about that. It's a great tank tab. Support tab is, is, it's a one dimensional. It only really does one thing, which is Cromwell sixes. But that's better than a lot of other support tabs in the game. Like, let's be real. AT tab does what Commonwealth AT tabs do. It's fine. It's, it's very functional. It's good. Um, it's nothing out of the ordinary. A tab is really solid. This is great. RD tab is not actually that good. It, it's really just 25 pounders if you be real with yourself about it. Yes, you can bring the GMCs, but the, the numbers are very limited. Um, the off map is not a great off map, but truthfully, it's very cost efficient technically at only 130 points too. Um, and the air tab is great for what it does. There's no AT. Also knows there's no AT rockets here at all. Um, so, you know, but it is good. It's Tempest. Tempest are fantastic. So very interesting deck here. If you guys enjoyed this, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and consider checking out that Patreon link down below. Thanks a bunch, guys, and have a fantastic day.